Hi, welcome back to a shop. Today we have a repair shop. A friend of mine asked me if I could take care of his um, milling machine's spindle. He has a small bench top, home shop type or semi-professional even, um, milling machine and uh, the Morse Taper 2 spindle on it is a constant problem. The manufacturer doesn't heat treat them very um, very well. They are kind of soft and um, when you do heavy milling with the uh, Morse Taper 2 tooling in the spindle you're, um, you're checking up the run out of the Morse Taper. The, um, the Morse Taper kind of works or bell mouths in the end of the spindle and um, that ruins the run out. Um, he has two spindles for this machine, one replacement and one original. Um, I already repaired one of his spindles. Um, I came, I, I got away just by hand reaming the taper with a Morse Taper 2 hand reamer and adjusting the run out by um, using pressure in different directions. But this is a more severe case of um, bell mouthing. So um, we're going to remachine the taper. We're setting we're going to set this up on the lathe, set our compound to the angle of the uh, Morse taper and recut it. And then we will finish it with a reamer. I don't have to grind this taper because um, this, as I said, this, the material of the spindle is kind of soft and um, we can get away with uh, machining. Here I have a Morse Taper 2 test bar. This, it has a, a Morse Taper 2 shank here and a cylindrical and straight portion here and that's what we're going to use to check the run out later. And also we're using this taper as a reference for setting our compound. Okay, we're at the leaf and we're going to set up our test bar in the chuck. We're only clamping it very lightly. We don't need to crank down on it, we're just using it for adjustment. First we're going to set this for run out. Uh, so we don't introduce an error from, from the beginning. I have my little Noga stand here. We set it up on top. And um, my trick to set the run out is my um, back plate of the chuck has some has air. I can loosen the bolts and then knock it for zero run out. I did this with every lathe I had so far and I had excellent results. I don't need... I, I've, um, I rarely have a need for a um, collet chuck or a set screw chuck. So that's the El Cheapo var variant. So we loosen the bolts of the back plate and now we look for our high spot and um, our high spot is right here at zero. The low spot is minus 600 so we have to knock it down three hundredths of a millimeter. Yeah and that's almost zero run out within a few seconds. Um, I know that some people will be concerned that the knocking will ruin the spindle bearings but um, this lathe has um, tapered roller bearings and those can take quite a shock. Um, they stand up to a pretty heavy loads and um, I don't have problems doing that. Also I'm just using a um, a carpet rift to knock the chuck so I don't mar anything. And uh, yeah, we're at one hundredths of a millimeter run out. That's fine for that application. Now we can swing around our um, tool post. Okay, we will start out with a one hundredths um, division indicator, and later when we're in the west vicinity of the um, correct angle we will change to a 2000 indicator. 
Right now I'm just rough aligning everything. And it helps if you see me tighten the screws so it don't uh, move around all the time. And also it's important to set the, um, the, the contact tip, the stylus of your dial test indicator on center height when you're doing this or you will get a, a wrong angle. Okay, rough aligned it. I set the dial up here to uh, 20 and if you run it along the whole taper we get a pretty stable reading, almost no run out or uh, no deviation from the from the number the dial test indicator shows. Now we change to our two thousandths of a millimeter indicator and do this check again. Okay, this dial indicator shows two thousandths of a millimeter um, every division. That's um, one ten thousandths of an inch, about one ten thousandths. Uh, but just to, so you have uh, for the for the non-metric guys out there. And when we run, oh crap, we just hit the, um, the test bar with the dial test indicator. We have to set it a bit in uh, a different way. I really like this small um, Noga stand. Okay, there we go. Uh, eight thousandth of a millimeter and end of travel. Um, eight thousandths of a millimeter on this distance. Um, okay, we are well below one hundredth of a millimeter. I can live with that. Okay, I set the spindle up in the three chart check. This side is of course a chest of a run out and I lined it straight so it, it's not uh, cantilevered in one direction and then I set up my steady rest over here and um, of course the steady rest um, equalizes out any run out error. As you can see the needle of the 2000 millimeter indicator is uh, barely moving. That's uh, most of it is surface roughness of the of this uh, diameter, but um, the same time as it evens out the um, the runout error, it can introduce an orientation error. You can um, tilt the part up, but still have zero runout on the end, and that's uh, always a thing to consider. That. The reason why we have to um, align your piece straight before so it's not uh, wobbling out on the end. You have to set your run out here and here before you set up your steady rest. And then when you move in your fingers of the steady rest you have to make sure that you don't push the um, workpiece in one, one or other direction. Okay, we're ready to do the boring. I set up my boring bar with a carbide insert. We will take just a very light cut to true up the run out of this taper and that sorry and then we will finish it with the Morse taper 2 reamer because um, there is a problem with Morse tapers um, due to the high or the very shallow angle if you widen the diameter very much it it goes in very 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 deep and I don't want the taper to be too deep because that can lead to other problems uh, like a too long draw bore which is the least of a problem but the uh, more safer tool tools then can cut bottom out in the socket the more safer two socket and that's nothing 
I want to happen. So let's take a very light pass and then we switch over to the reamer. Okay, we're at the end of the travel. Now we can retract our tool. And we're retracting it with the bad slide. Okay. Yeah, we took a very shallow pass. And now we can change over to the reamer. Okay, here is our most taper 2 reamer. We put some, yeah. Looks like I need a new acid brush. Um, drop some cutting oil on it. And go into the bore. And we're going to um, support it. With the dead center. I'm not going to... Um, to run this under machine power in. Um, I'm going to crank this by hand and wrench. Just lock the machine spindle. The spindle lock on this machine consists of a piece of plywood on the machine's base and an old parallel. The parallel is stood up on the um, on the plywood and it's resting against uh, the jaw char back here and if you get everything aligned the right way this is pretty solid now for the reaming we're just giving we give very light touch with uh, pressure with the tail stop because these more taper two runners tend to bind due to the taper form so let's take a very light pass. And never turn a, a reamer never a, a taper team reamer or a normal reamer backwards that's the best way to ruin it you will roll over the edges of your the cutting edges okay let's take this out and we made some chips. We're really only shaving off the the absolutely high spots, so we get a nice smooth bore, and that that feels pretty good. Now we clean out the taper first with a shop towel. Don't do this on the power. This will catch you tear off your fingers and you don't want this to happen really and then with a Morse taper 2 wiper then make sure that your Morse taper 2 test board is clean Set up the dial indicator. This is a one hundredth of a millimeter indicator. Okay. Run out near the spindle end. Uh, some needle movement. And at the extreme end of the test bar, 120 millimeters away, we get a bit more, uh, about two hundredths of a millimeter. Okay, I brought the camera in a bit closer and I have my two thousandths of a millimeter dial test indicator up on the test bar. And we're going for a spin. 
and it shows about four thousandths of a millimeter run out on the uh, spindle nose and here we have about two twenty-six thousandth of a millimeter that's um, 0.026 millimeters and that's really not much uh, considering it's for a bench top milling machine for a for a model engineering milling machine and I think the owner of the spindle will be happy with that um, it's way better than uh, throwing the spindle out and paying good money for a new one that's also going to crap out pretty fast okay you can see it now we spin it and we get about uh, 100 about 1.8 hundredths of a millimeter at the extreme end of the test bar yeah a bit yeah about that and on the close end of the spindle yeah two oops about uh, two thousandths of a millimeter so I call this done I think this is not too shabby of a repair in the home shop um, hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching